Welcome back to Kutztown University. Our first game, DeLone Catholic versus Communications Tech out of the Philadelphia Public League. Of course, DeLone Catholic from the York Adams Division Four. York uh, DeLone Catholic off to an amazing start. They lost the first game. Since then, they have reeled off 17 wins in a row. What does DeLone have to do to really stop this athletic Phoenix club? Well, Jason, first of all, I think they've, they've got to shorten the game. Uh, and, and make the high percentage shots. You get a second chance on the board, put it in. Uh, slow the tempo. Keep it out of Scooty Randall's hands. Find him when he's coming up the court. And you know, the lone Catholics always stayed fundamental under Jim Dooley. Stay fundamental. You know, on the communication tech, you want to score in the 70s. I mean, you want to score up. You want to keep pushing the ball. Uh, and up tempo, up tempo, up tempo. And last but not least, use the size advantage, crash the boards hard, and uh, communication tech come away with the win if they do that. There's a look at the Squires once again. From District 3, Division 4 of the York Adams League, 17 and 1. As we look at the uh, players of DeLone Catholic, the starters for Jim Dooley's team, Cody Smith, number 3, Noah Landy, number 12, Tyler Mummert, number 13, Adam Namick, number 14, and the go-to guy for the Squires is number 23, the junior center, Chris Hartman, who is 6'6". Jim Dooley is assisted by Tom Becker. For Communications Tech, when you look at teams, both of these teams in the matchup, I mean, when I say state playoffs, you look right now and you see some big, solid kids coming on the floor, and you've got to be excited as a coach. I know Jim Dooley's excited for his opportunity, but Lee, Lou Vister on one hand wants to show that, hey, we deserve here. Runner-up's not good enough at this point. DeLone Catholic wearing the black with gold trim. Communications Tech in the white with the blue. One man-to-man, -man, Jason. They're for, uh, forcing the up-tempo game. Good stop down here on this end. And look at Hartman bring the ball up the floor at 6-6. Hartman six, six. can push it. To Mummert, no. Loose ball on the floor. Monroe is there. The takeaway, Hartman looking for down low points. He got it. Nice little assist by Noah Landon, six foot junior. And uh, Hartman just finishing. And we said earlier, make the high percentage shot, stay in the game. Really not feeling the effects of it. Down low, the rebound. Big board by Adam Naiman. Smith will push to Hartman again, running the break. Hartman to the glass. Look at him. Another finish. easy two. Jason, look at the big boy run the floor. Right away, this is what coaches look for at the next level. Can this big kid run the floor? And I tell you what, I think he can play swing man at 6'6. Six, six. And he's not just a center. You know, at high school, you're forced sometimes to play your big man as a center, but this kid runs the floor well. He could probably be a good three man. Delone Catholic with a 4 2 lead. It's Mummert out ahead, and now it's 6 2. Right away, Jim Dooley mentioned one of the big keys to this ball game is keeping his team in it in the first quarter. Again, I saw a different look down here at DeLone, uh, Jason. They, they so the Phoenix applying some pressure. DeLone beats it easily. Key to break, breaking the pressure against the zone is passing the ball. A lot of times you see high school kids try to dribble through a zone press. Coaches go crazy, Jason. Hartman out top. Good matchup. Hartman checked one-on-one -on -one by Randall. That's what we wanted to see, Jason. Two athletic kids going at it. Namick down low to Hartman, blocked, but there is a foul. So Hartman will go to the free throw line. And early on, Jason, one thing that I'll notice, uh, we're fine tuning. Uh, you'll see DeLone Catholic on the floor, and communications tech needs to match that aggression. Hartman gets the first one to drop. The foul is on Hertz, number 15 is in, along with Austin Brady, number five. Hartman already, uh, you know, Five points to start the game off right away. Talented players in Philadelphia, perhaps the best senior in the city. He's looked at, uh, being looked at by LaSalle and Temple, maybe considering Virginia Commonwealth as well. I like his size. I, I like his athletic ability, his slashing material, the, the, the way he slashes the basket. But quickly, Hartman right over now, Randall. Hartman is, is just, he's, he's in his groove right now, Jason, and he's not here to back down, that's for sure. Is the shot here is by... Jones and rebounded by DeLone. Here's his chance to really shine and perhaps open some eyes. Jason, no doubt about it. I mean, one of the biggest keys at 6'6", at the Division I level, when you're 6'6", you need to be able to dribble and run the floor. He can do that. Yeah. And right there's a nice move, a kiss off the glass. He uses his right hand over the middle. And fundamental, this kid's very fundamental. Little jump hook by Hartman. Ensley is in. Orlando Ensley misses. Big rebound by the Squires. That's Adam Namick. Now there's a 6-2. To Hartman. My Beautiful goodness. play over the top. I want to tell you one thing about that. Why did he get that bucket? Because he outruns everybody down the floor. This kid is impressing me right from the early start. Another bucket for the big boy. Rowe will shoot. Off the iron. Rebound. That was Cody Smith. Mummert will push. Looking for Hartman. Hartman now being checked 
by Virgil Pearson, number 21. Randall will come out and play number 14. That is Adam Namick for DeLone Catholic. Playing for the last shot using the old triangle stall game. And uh, something I use many times to try to keep the game, keep the ball in your hands. And just and they're doing it, they're doing it very efficient. Screen down, pop up. And look who they have handling the ball on top of the key. Now that impressed me. Six six I didn't have very many six six kids with the ball in their hand at the top of the key. Well, this, I imagine this, they this. want him to get that last shot. That no would doubt just about be my it. guess. No doubt about it. Good defense, though, by the Phoenix. I could tell you one thing about the Phoenix. They can match up man-to-man -man, uh, very well. 13-6 you, you to six after one period here at Kutztown. We'll be back. 1-2-2 two, two press. Our first three-pointer of the afternoon makes it a 13-9 DeLone edge. That's the one thing about the three ball. It didn't come into high school basketball until 1988, and, and, and as you know, it, it changes the game. Yes. It puts your team right back into the ball game. Smith, the move, but he's fouled by Roar. You'll take that penetration out of Smith because you know what? It's being aggressive. It makes things happen. The five foot ten senior. Looking on. Communications tech. As Smith hits the free throw. Cody. And that's a big key in, in, in lone Catholic teams. Smith is a 5'10 junior. Hits the second. Bench for the Phoenix. Misses the second. Hartman the board. Jason, what this does when you miss that back end, you can't set that press up. And again, they have the Phoenix. Uh, communication text one, up tempo, up tempo, up tempo. There's Hartman, Hartman. good catch, better shot. Hartman posting up, Jason, good bucket. What does Hartman do? He squares his shoulders, he turns, and he makes the high percentage bucket. 17. Just like that. Never fear your athletes. Near steal by Communications Tech. Hartman has it. With four minutes to go here before halftime. The pressure. Has oh. kicked it up a notch here for the Phoenix. All you want to do if you're the Catholic right now is just continue working your offense till you get an easy one. Look that. Take Good it right take. to the bucket. That's Charlie Hurts, number 15. Good layup, 1917. How you break a run? You score a bucket. Get Especially the an easy one. Get great effort, but it's hard to believe that communication tech, boom, just like that, right back in a ball game. You knock down two threes from the outside in the second quarter, and just like that, you close the gap. Well, that's what speed and athleticism and depth will do for you as Hartman finally picks up the ball. Kick out. Smith thought about it. He'll bring it over to Mummert. Mummert trying to set the offense. Hartman open. Guarded by Randall. It's Smith. Nice look. Easy three by Cody Smith. One thing about Cody Smith is rotation is beautiful. You can tell he's shot in rhythm. And that's exactly what you want to do out of one of your shooters. There's, again, 5'10", Jim is happy. They have stormed back and now lead by 11. We'll take a break. It's 33-22, halftime from Kutztown. Coming up, obviously, you see these kids from Philly all the time. What are your impressions of Hartman? the big guy from DeLone Catholic who was really on fire in that first quarter. I'm very impressed with Hartman to the point where I think he's going to, he's definitely going to get some snips from Division I schools. Um, he, he's got nimble feet, he's got great size, for, and he's probably going to wind up being a three-man at the next level. Yeah, of course he is at that 6'6 six, six size, and especially in District 3, he can really dominate down low, but once you get to the next level in college, you know, that's where you get into the uh, small forward range. I thought he was a tweener earlier coming in, and, and to play at Division One level, you have to be able to put the ball on the floor if you're six six. I think he's a, a, a natural three man. The more I look at him, he puts the ball on the floor. And when they were playing for the last shot, he was one of the guys handling the ball. The lone Catholic uh, broke the press again. The communication tech press earlier one two two. And now he put a little fire together because he said, "Fellas, 27 points in, a, in one quarter is, is not what we do at the lone Catholic." And if you're Communications Tech, I'm sure Lou Beaster said, continue push the ball up the floor. Continue to force the up-tempo, up-tempo, up-tempo. Hartman, the pull-up, a little up-tempo for DeLone. That was sweet. I mean, that when, when you can make a pull-up jumper off the window, that's sweet right there. Randall, the kick out. Monroe off the mark, rebound Hartman. Here's DeLone running. Name it. The lane is good, and now DeLone Catholic has some legs. It's 36-28, and a timeout. Communications Tech. We'll take a break as well. The lead is down to eight at the Sports Fever Challenge. Um, he's worked hard for the last four years. He, he he can do it all. I mean, he's he's actually offering his game. Big play right there by, by Hartman. Yeah, Hartman has done some things here. Big basket, and he is pumped. DeLone now is down six. And this is a good matchup as Randall came out to play the ball. And then Hartman, wow, good play. Here's the key to that. 
key to that play is this summer on the AAU circuit, he became a renowned three-point shooter, where he made where he made shots from all over the court. That's you're not going to see that uh, that much here this year because they need him to play inside. Hartman, ooh, Hartman, the lay-in. Hartman just skied to the goal, and now it's a three-point contest. Renowned in the city as Scooty. That's what he's known. That's what he's known as. That's what he, he prefers to be called. That's the only. That's the only name some people know him by. And during the delivery, when he was uh, obviously being delivered, he came out so quick. The, the attending physician left the room, and he came out. He scooted out, so it became Scooty, right? Is yeah, that the his, story? His mother gave him that name. Um, I remember a Scooney, right? There was Scooney Pen. Yeah. So now we got Scooty. We Smith has it for Delone. Morrow's is. Nelson, any relations to Jameer Nelson from the Philadelphia? Oh, no. No, no <laughs> relation. Okay. You know, you hear these great names, you want to make sure that these guys may be a family link, family blood there. Under three minutes, it's a five-point lead. Hartman is at the top of the key. Namick almost had it stripped away. Turnaround hook, nice shot. One thing you hear coaches say over and over, Jason Morrow, is when a big man, you don't want to put it on the floor in, in, the, in the flow of the game. That's exactly what you want out of a shooter. Hartman down low, easy bucket for him. Back and forth with the superstars here. That's Hartman's 24th point, Jason. Wow. Somebody better get a body on him, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> by, by this point in the game, you'd figure, well, maybe we should do that, right? Man, he would scream, <laughs> feed the hot man, and you better do it. Under two minutes to play here in the third, Hartman has it, 43-39. Hartman and Randall checking each other, and they have been going at it in this third quarter on the scoreboard. Namick, strong move, behind the back pass, left it. Namick back has it again, and Namick rolls it home. Great right. give and go almost, uh, you know, not exactly textbook, but it worked. Hartman draws a defender, finds someone, finds his man, Namick. And it was a good one. This one has gotten tight. It's 43-41, Communications Tech on top. We'll take a break. Fourth quarter coming up on the Sports Fever Television Network. I wanted to thank Amaro Austin for joining us from Philadelphia Prep Hoops at the Hoffman Ford Sports Fever Challenge, the 14th edition. And wow, after that third quarter, we've got a ball game again because it's 43-41 Phoenix over DeLone Catholic. And really, the stars came to play in that third quarter. Collectively, we had seen Hartman in the first, Randall, Randall in the second, and then Hartman and Randall doing it together on both sides, on each side in the third. You know what it was coming out of that huddle, going into the huddle into the third, after the third quarter. I'm sure both coaches said, players, step up time. And that's what you saw out of Scooty Randall, and that's definitely what you saw of Chris Hartman. Chris Hartman and both Scooty Randall, the great thing about both these players is they get others involved. And you can see that there is absolutely no way are these guys uh, hoggish with the ball in any attempt like that. These guys, they, they work within the game, and that's what you like to see out of kids like this. Monroe, off-balance shot, rebounded by Namick. Namick, very unsung guy, has done really good things here, especially in that third quarter. Namick's your workhorse, 6'2", senior, and you know you see, he does all the little things right, Jason. One of those glue guys, as uh, exactly. Dick Vitale would say. Exactly, you need those guys, guys who know the roles, guys just fundamental solid player, probably played many years in CYO. Backdoor cut. Continuity offensively, long as people's, people's moving. I haven't seen him really go with a set per se, but <laughs> when you got guys like this that can get off the dribble real quick, you let him go. Communications Tech on top, 45-41 here. Namick for three, hits it. Again, Adam <laughs> Namick buries it from the top of the key. There's Namick doing all the little things in it. I don't By Virgil Pearson, the 6'2 junior, going up a guy who's 6'6. Jason, he timed it perfectly. Approaching the three minute mark. Namick will shoot. And this one drops. Adam Namick. Namick just hit a big jumper from the elbow. Looked like they went with the, just a, a set play, went out of the flex offense, and that's an elbow jumper in the second half, and he's going to try to make up with it defensively. Good look to Namick, and the athletic rebound by Hartman out of nowhere. Let me tell you something about that follow-up. He never gave up on the play. He shows his athletic ability. Foot senior shows, uh, I mean, just all kinds of nerve to pull that jumper, and he pulled that jumper from deep. Under two minutes to go, Jim Dooley wants to talk about it after the slam by Hartman. We'll go to break. It's a four-point game. Don't go away. Welcome back. Chris Hartman has more than 30 points, and those were two of the prettiest ones we've had thus far. And it's now in. We'll come up top. 
Good strip by Hartman, and it's off a Phoenix player. So Hartman now doing on the defensive end. What'd you see Lou Beaster do? Right, there's a look at Jim Dooley. Delone Catholic down four. What's he telling his guys? He's right now, make every shot count. If you can, <laughs> if you can, make every be a shot. maker. That's be a maker, Jason. Pretty prophetic. Not, no, not a shooter. Ah, <laughs> be okay. a maker, not a shooter. No. Down 11, and to come back and make this one a game, there's certainly some positives to be pulled away from this game, especially when you consider the competition. Hartman converting there, and again, that, uh, that gives him 31 for the game. Right here is a key. You want to miss. You want to make this back end of this two-shot foul, and uh, get that press on. And see if you can come up with a turnover. There's Hartman going right away for the press. Of course, Easy. we also need to have a point guard. But when you have a point guard who can handle the basketball and also shoot free throws, it's huge, especially down the stretch. Long shot by Delone, way off the mark. Hartman battles for the rebound. His body was contorted. He couldn't get a good shot off, but he is fouled. I'm not sure if it. If Way anyways to see <laughs> to try and get that call. So it's a seven-point game with 19 seconds to go. Hartman from the line, good rotation. And it right now, he's, I, I, you know, they played four games this week. I'm not sure com Communication Tech played three. So, again, you know, this is where, you know, those legs feel a little heavy in a game like this, but he's, he's answering it. And another one drops the pressure. We'll continue. And we have a timeout on the floor. We'll take a break as well. It's a five-point game. Back with the final 19 seconds in a moment. Hartman will leave the ball game, and wow, he was outstanding. He is one of our Hoffman Ford players of the game, along with Scooty Randall, and uh, wow. I mean, if people weren't aware of Hartman, they are now. I mean, the athleticism, the tenacity, and uh, of course, making and hitting shots. To tell you, let's, let's, let's take a, you know, obviously DeLone's on the clock, they're gonna lose this game, but 17 straight, 16 straight, excuse me, they win. You know why this loss isn't bad? If you're going to lose, lose now. You do not want to lose in February because that costs you in your sectional. You don't want to lose in district playoffs because you're gone and the bus is, is gone. So really, this loss doesn't really hurt the loan in the aspect of, you know, state playoffs, district playoffs, anything like that. Well, it's over. You see it's 61-52, Communications Tech beating DeLone Catholic in our opening game. Much more basketball from Kutztown when we return. <laughs> 